greet you in the powerful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to our 14th mnemonic in internal medicine. This is our final one in the discipline of neurology. So let's get going. What do you call the acid fast bacilli that joined the army? Military TB. And what did Shakespeare <laughs> ask his physician when he was afraid that he had tuberculosis? TB or not TB? That is the question. <laughs> okay, so thank you for joining me even as we break down seven T's of spinal cord disease. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it represents some of the most commonly presenting etiologies that we encounter in clinical practice, especially here in South Africa. So the first T stands for TB. Now, TB can affect the spine in many ways. Right? The first Probably one of the most common ways is POTS disease, which effectively is a combination of osteomyelitis and arthritis, which affects multiple vertebrae. The typical site of involvement is the anterior aspect of the vertebral body adjacent to the subchondral plate and occurs frequently in the lower thoracic vertebrae. Uh, a possible effect of the disease is vertebral collapse, and when this occurs anteriorly, anterior wedging results, leading to a kyphotic deformity of the spine. Other possible effects can include compression fractures, spinal deformities, neurological insults, including paraplegia. TB can also attack the spine in other ways, like causing a myeloradiculopathy, induce vasculitis, and also cause space-occupying lesions like granulomata and tuberculomas in the spine, which cause compression. Tumors as well can affect the spine, and by tumors we mean a whole variety of them, like meningiomas, neurofibromas, lymphomas, leukemia, myeloma, etc. Spinal cord trauma as well can occur, and usually this depends on the tracts which are involved, typically giving you a brown sequad syndrome in hemitransection of the cord. Now, these three causes of spinal cord disease give you extramodality uh, compression or manifestations. Versus intermodality causes, where we have transverse myelitis, which by and large can be the result of some inflammatory, uh, infectious etiology or paraneoplastic etiology. Thrombosis, <clears throat> which typically causes either anterior or posterior spinal artery affectation. And the classic seller for anterior spinal thrombosis is sparing of the posterior columns. So you have involvement of the spinothalamic tract, the corticospinal tract, but sparing of proprioception and joint position space. To all we spoke about yesterday, B12 deficiency, which gives you subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord, which gives you two P's in the pod. The two P's in the pod basically stands for affectation of the pyramidal tract, the posterior columns, and peripheral neuropathy with optic atrophy and dementia. Tavis dysalis is a manifestation of tertiary syphilis and involves the posterior columns as well. I think it's also important for us to outline the clinical differences between extra and intermodality spinal cord lesions. So on history... Uh, Extramodality tends to manifest asymmetrically, but intermodality symmetrically. In terms of the pain characteristics, extramodality, uh, if it's extradural extramodality, it usually gives you local or vertebral pain. And if it's intradural, it gives you a radicular kind of pain versus intermodality, which gives you more deep-seated funicular or tract kind of pain. Motor manifestations, upper motor neuron signs occur early with extramodality lesions uh, where, uh, and late with intermodality. Low motion neuron signs typically are segmental with extramodality versus diffuse pattern in intermodality. In terms of sensory involvement, in extramodality lesions, there's ascending involvement, so there's sacral involvement. But with intermodality, there's descending involvement, so it tends to be sacral sparing. And this associated sensory loss is present with intermodality, but absent with extramodality lesions. And in terms of autonomics, there's sphincter involvement late with extramodality, but early on with intermodality. All right. So there you go, guys. Seven T's of spinal cord disease. Extramodality causes including TB, tumors, and trauma. Intermodality being transverse myelitis, thrombosis, B12 deficiency, and TB disorders. God bless you and have a wonderful day. We're going to start with mnemonics in cardiology from tomorrow. See you then. Take care.